Now, this also seems like something that citizen scientists might be able to do, look for transients, because there are a lot of people doing astrophotography out there, and there have been for decades, and that maybe people that have archives should look and see if anything's missing in their photographic plates that they have and let you you guys know about it. I would love if they did, if they did that. And we also have a citizen science project that we've been running with the Vasco team, where people can go and actually search for this type of objects that are vanishing. We're now actually ra- wrapping up the results from there. And like we found some thousands of transients, we didn't find any example of a star that is there in five places and later vanished, but we found them, uh, many of these short-lived transient things. So everyone are welcome to help us with it also. Or they can also do it with their own telescopes and their own archives. I think there's a lot of potential when it comes to transient searches, especially in the short time region. Now, you recently spoke at the Seoul conference, which was put on by Gary Nolan and um, regarding the UAP. Tell us about that. Oh, my God. That was the most interesting conference I've been to probably in my life. So fun. So nice people. So brilliant thinkers and minds and like such a diversity in the type of work people are doing. And still there is such a um, unity because everyone wants to understand the phenomenon or the UAPs or if there are ET probes and this curiosity people had, like uh, there was such a passion for the topic. (laughs) Apologies for the sounds across. That, if, just for the listeners, that is the sound of a very active cat. Yes. All right, Doctor, thank you for visiting with us yet again. And I look forward to the next paper because I, I'm just fascinated by these transients. And legitimately, this is one of the things that really puzzles me these days in science is, the, is these transients, especially this one with the Palomar plate, because it just does not look like it, it looks like stars. Yeah, that's the thing. It's like we have several of these cases with the multiple transients all look like stars and some are even aligned, like lying beautifully in a line, like if it was satellites moving and tumbling. And of course, they are from the early 50s when there was nothing human at those high altitudes or in space. So I find it super puzzling. And maybe there's some new physics that I don't know about. Maybe there's some completely different type of explanation. I'm, of course, also limited with my bias, but I find it fascinating and I want to understand more what it is with new projects and everything I can do to solve the riddle. Natural or artificial, it's going to be interesting. I think so, too. I'm very curious about where it would lead.